One thing I find very interesting about the classical philosophy and Aristotle in particular is um, – and it may be counterintuitive for Catholics who are used to thinking about, well, happiness is a matter of spiritual things. You know, um, you know, if you if you're virtuous and if you love God, then you'll be happy. Um, and the the classical um, point of view, even the classical Catholic point of view, doesn't necessarily agree with that. That That's that right. virtue uh, virtue does not consist in happiness. So why why is virtue not happiness? Why isn't virtue its own reward in the, yeah. in the ultimate sense? It's, that's one of the noblest mistakes, the idea that virtue alone will make you happy. Uh, it, but, um, but the wisest thinkers, and including, contrary to popular belief, uh, Christian and Catholic thinkers, as you point out, have realized that this isn't true. You know, if you are, if you are, um, uh, if, if you are virtuous, but somebody is, is barbecuing you on the rack as an instrument of torture, as happened to one of the saints, if you've been exiled and you've lost all of your friends, it's unlikely that you're going to be happy. Um, or at least uh, very happy. It's so we do need good fortune too, and uh, and even that's not the end of it. But um, but it, but this is but at least this is true about happiness. Uh, without about virtue, without the virtues, we're sure not going to be happy. We they enable us to know what to do with good fortune that comes our way. They enable us to bear up under misfortune. Now, I, toward the end of the, toward the end of the, of the long second part of the book, I even call this the worldly wise man's view of happiness. Not just virtue alone, but virtue plus good fortune. Uh, virtue plus luck. And it's, it's not a complete answer to the problem of happiness. It has a certain heft. Most people would agree that it's, that it's, but I develop a critique of this too. Still, it has some heft to it. There is, there is some substance to it. We certainly need to practice the virtues. They're just not a magic key. Be good and, and everything will be happy. You know, people, religious people often make this mistake because they think, they think God is promising them that if they pray and if they love God and if they seek God, they will be happy all the time. I've even had people say to me, you know, I go to church, I go to mass, I, I pray to God, I, I, I long for God, but I'm not fulfilled. Well, of course you're not fulfilled. We aren't going to be fulfilled until we see his face. And that's not going to happen in this life. So in this life, we're going to have an, we're going to have unfulfilled longings, even if we have all the all the things that people think are the good things, even if we have enough wealth so that we're not starving, and if even if we have we can we can uh, we can feed our children, we have friends, we we have meaningful work, we have all of these kinds of things. There are going to be there's going to be this deep unfulfilled longing that cannot be fulfilled in this life because we are not beholding the face of God Himself. Saint Paul talks about this. He says he says we are groaning. Now he says, all nature is groaning; it awaits its redemption. We, uh, uh, he says, now we only see as as though in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. So I think that we have to distinguish between the fragmentary, incomplete, partial happiness of this life, which is nothing to sneeze at, but it is all those things. And the complete happiness, which, which is utterly fulfilling and will leave nothing further to be desired, and which we are not going to experience until, until we see the face of God in the next. So while we're trying to be virtuous and hoping for good luck in this life, we ought to be seeking God with all our hearts. And the, another aspect of this that people often don't understand, some, many Catholics sort of get this. Many Catholics actually get this very well and much better than I do and practice it very well, but some don't. And that's that, um, that even suffering, uh, can have redemptive value. We can offer it to Christ. It can be, uh, but that doesn't be, mean we're happy when we're suffering just but it because mean we have peace happy. and joy. You know, St. Paul speaks of being in prison and he's not very happy about being in prison and he misses his friends. He longs to be with them. He's, uh, he's tired of, this, of the way this is going, and yet he has the joy to be able to sing hymns to his, to his Lord. Um, you know, this is, this is uh, the, the possibility of the coexistence of those things is really interesting.